sessions, we're going to be recording all of these and sending it out after the conference is completed. So you can always go back and see uh, maybe another session that you're interested in or to review this as well. Um, just wanted to start us off in welcoming Chris McAdoo and Kikai Irwin, who will be presenting on Elevating Olelo Hawaii and Fostering Aloha Aina with Hawaiian Leveled Readers. Kikai Irwin is a Hawaiian Language Curriculum Specialist and Project um, Coordinator for Halikua Mo'o Hawaiian Language Center at University of Hawaii Hilo. And Chris McAdoo is a Senior Education Design Specialist with Kamehameha Publishing. So let me start it off by, um, before we turn over to Chris, if you want to unmute your mics or your cameras and just start to welcome them with a, a round of applause. Aloha my kako. Oh, Chris McAdoo, ko'u inoa. And uh, see on my screen what I've been up to, hunting barrels and makapu'u. Uh, oh, Alexandria, Virginia, Mayao. And see where I was born and raised. Uh, noho. Uh, oh, if, um, if you're familiar with Remember the Titans, uh, Coach Boone was uh, my driver's ed teacher. <laughs> so a little fun trivia fact for me. <laughs> He's just as cool as he is in the movie, <laughs> in real person. Noho Alma Waimanalo, Pana Alma Kamehameha Publishing. So that's a little bit about me. Pass it over to Kikai. Aloha kako e nahoa o kia ahakuka. No ka vaibai no na kungo. O vau keia o Kikai Anani Irwin. E kama no hilo, hilo one, hilo paliku, hilo panakahi, ika uakani lehua. Um, as you can see in this slide here, one of my favorite places on earth, Honolii. Um, yeah, you can advance it, Chris. So I, I, I know this picture isn't very interesting, but to me it holds a lot of, uh, a lot of aloha because I always think of my fourth grade teacher, Miss Lorna Hewitt. Uh, Hapa Hawaii Hapa Haole woman from Keokaha who stands out in my memory as somebody who embodies the theme of this conference really. She was way ahead of her time in terms of um, instilling in us a love for um, what makes Hawaii unique um, and she just was a master teacher um, a master of the pedagogy of aloha and it's because of her I think is a big reason why I do what I do today. Okay, Chris, go ahead and uh, move it forward. So I grew up in Hilo. Hilo Union is my um, alma mater. Um, and then I, I spent many years on Oahu, pursuing my education at UH Manoa. Um, and as I had finished my degree in English, and um, could you back up, Chris? Um, I began pursuing uh, Hawaiian language education. Uh, my kumu no Al Warner told me, Kekai, they have a shortage on Maui. So <laughs> I ended up at Paia. Uh, this is w one of my first classes. And well, one of the students you see here now he works with me. Uh, all of these students are precious to me, and they're um, amazing people doing amazing things. Okay, go ahead. Um, following that, I moved um, after my um, children were born, we moved back to Oahu to be closer to my wife's family. And I helped with... Uh, um, I worked at Puahala Enchanted Lake, and then um, I helped in establishing Kamakau School. I was part of the first team. Uh, this is back when the campus was still located located on Kauai Nui, and this is one of our work projects at Napohaku Na Ohauvahine. And um, following about 10 years working in the classroom, uh, Hawaiian Medium Schools that I mentioned, I joined the team at the, uh, the Halikuomo o Hawaiian Language Center which is located here, where I come to you from, on the campus of UH Hilo, um, in beautiful Hilo. Um, and our kuleana, is, our main kuleana is to provide curriculum and resources at Maka'olelo Hawaii to our uh, many Hawaiian immersion sites across the Pai Aina. We also have as a goal to support Hawaiian language um, growth and expansion throughout the community of Hawaii and throughout the world. Um, Hello, everybody, for joining our session. Kikai and I are going to share um, education resources, uh, two different projects that were both uh, a labor of love and included a lot of different people. So we just get the honor today to represent this work and their voices and their mana'o and ike. 
if you have questions, please uh, put them in the chat and we can be organic and answer them on the fly or that might be safe for the end. And we'll definitely have time for questions at the end. So each of us will talk for about 15 to 20 minutes about the different projects. So just to start out, Hawaiian education contexts, uh, they're varied um, across Hawaii. And uh, we've tried to create resources that meet um, the current need uh, for Hawaiian culture-based resources, whether that be through Olelo, Ike, uh, science, social studies, uh, literacy, just to meet the needs that, uh, that Kumu are facing and to try to fill in spaces of resources that there might be a lack of. Um, so this is so the projects we're going to talk about today are just an addition to a lot of other work that's out there. Uh, and I think where we are now with thinking of the different outcomes like um, DOE, Kaipuni, we have HA. Uh, yes, we're working towards AOLA outcomes and maybe Hawaiian-focused charter schools, the culturally relevant assessment. These are, these are just some of the different outcomes in, in the landscape of the various educational contexts in which we, we hope that these resources of our, are of value. Um, so we definitely want to kind of um, go through a little bit of history of how um, in the past have met the needs of Hawaiian culture-based resources because there's a history to all the work that we do. And we're just standing on the shoulders of, of those that have come before us. So uh, in the past, on this journey towards resources, Kumu have translated cut and paste resources uh, they've created student-centered books and um, either had students write books or had them illustrate them. All great practices in the classroom. And then there were also Hawaiian language uh, teacher-created books where they, where Kumu created uh, books that filled in gaps maybe in the curriculum that they were teaching or just things that they were passionate about or or lessons that they wanted to pass on to their keiki or their hamana. And more recently, uh, in the KS context and our community education context, our kumu were creating um, science literacy books um, to kind of meet the need of, of standards, standards that they were teaching, but then also filling this kind of space for, for culture-based resources that had uh, Ike and Olelo in topics about our place, about Hawaii. So out of this work, I came a need to say, hey, we have these, let's share them and let's create more. And so leadership kind of got together and met with other leaders uh, across various educational contexts. And that's how we came into a partnership with Hale Komo'o and some other uh, Hawaiian language schools. And we uh, created a project called Pahana Aina Lupa Lupa, where we were intentionally trying to create more resources uh, and give voice to teachers to create resources. So our partners for the Pahana Aina Lupa Lupa project, uh, Kamehameha Schools, Hale Komo'o, Hawaiian Focus Charter Schools, Hawaiian Immersion Schools, and Community Specialists. It was about 100, it was over 100 educators altogether that, that eventually put their mana'o into these books. Together around this question, how do we develop 21st century science resources to elevate Olelo Hawaii and Aloha Aina for our earliest learners? And in answering this question, we all kind of, we drew upon our experiences in the classroom and especially what we were noticing in classrooms that, that, were, that were integrating this idea of Hawaiian culture-based education. And so we kind of linked back to these transformative practices that we were thinking as, the, as, as what our resources could be of value for in the classroom. IK Hawaii was the foundation for teaching and learning. Science content was taught from a Hawaiian epistemological framework, uh, in addition to maybe other perspectives. But this was definitely a lead perspective. And then Kumu were matching books to readers so that they so that they could have something that they could read that they were able to read on their level. And then teaching and learning uh, occurred in like a variety of contexts. So it was these transformative practices that really framed the the learning environments with which we created our resources so we we 
came up with development strands to ensure that we were on track to be a value for these contexts. Ik Hawaii, we wanted our books to have high language, culture, and Aina-based content, science. They needed to be able to align to any science standards out there. Uh, literacy, we wanted them to match um, national, national kind of knowledge standards, and then also developmental knowledge, and then practitioner knowledge. We wanted the Kumu to be able to influence and design the resources that that they were creating resources that they would use in their classrooms, right? Because they would be a value across the Lahui that way. Uh, and this is Pahana Aina Lupa Lupa. So the resources we created, kindergarten, different sets, four different sets in, in, this, uh, in this first set. So it's Kaheka, Loko Ia is another set, uh, Habitats or Kayanoho is another set, and then Kaiola or Ecosystems. So when you look at these different sets, you can think of them as kindergarten, Kaheka, first grade, Loko Ia, second grade, Kainoho, third grade, Kaiola. If you want to put them to like a content grade level, if you wanted to think of them in like a Hawaiian culture-based education context, those are just kind of theme sets that you can use them as and then make connections across the different sets. And then the kind of a, a third way that we were thinking about it is the little square books, they're on a leveled continuum. So if you're familiar with um, like A to Z or like DRA levels or those kind of things, we leveled the books according to Fountas and Pennell's A to Z on the English side. And then on the Hawaiian side, uh, there was many different education contexts and we kind of looked through everything and we came up with a continuum based on the Hakalama. So kindergarten would be Hakalama. Uh, first grade would be hey, ke, uh, le, me, ne, pe, and then second grade, hoko, hiki, li, and then third grade, hoko, lo. So that, that level of continuum is, is, is going to be the same across both projects. And we have lots of uh, research to kind of show if anybody would be interested. I could talk about that later. So these are the resources. Those are the different ways that we kind of thought about using them. The, the little squares are leveled books. And then the bigger book is an Ike Kahua book, which is meant to be a read aloud uh, to like a whole group setting or your more grade level uh, content. And yeah, so I'll probably end there with that. want to quickly show you our website just so you can dive in and get the PDFs. You can get the PDFs of the book here and you can get a couple other readers that we have. So when you go to the Kamehameha Publishing website, number three is Pahana Aina Lupa Lupa. Hawaiian culture-based science readers to foster Aloha Aina, to foster Aloha Hawaii and Aloha Aina. And when you come down here, you can purchase or you can go to parents and teachers. Really no need to purchase in the education context because I think we've probably distributed to most of your schools. If we've not, uh, please reach out to me. My, web, my email is at the bottom and we can we can see about that at the very least get the books for cost. So like, it's like a 60% discount or something like that, but we can talk and then go to for parents and teachers. When you go to this website, tons of information on this site, but I just want to direct you to the PAL books. So if you go to the PAL books, you'll see the Napuka, uh, Napuke Olelo Hawaii, the English books, Keakamai, and then for the love of Ike. When you go to the books, You'll see the PDFs. You can download the PDFs. And we also have our informational text continuum, which shows all the Ike about all the ways that we leveled the books and, and that kind of thing. So uh, you can download those and take a look at those. And we don't have a file of images for the books, but obviously, if you can screenshot the books, you can use the images in that way. So just wanted to kind of highlight that. Everything's accessible. Also, if you wanted ebooks, um, we do have the ebooks across all platforms that you can check them out from the Hawaii State Library through Overdrive and then the Libby app. And you can also go to Sora. If you want information on Sora, let me know. It's a little bit complicated because within your context, there's somebody that purchases for Sora, like the librarian would do that. So we can, you can just shoot me an email. We could talk further about that if you're not finding them on your Sora context. And I know that some Kumu don't really even really know what Sora is, but Sora is like the e-reader platform where you can check out books. So if you're unfamiliar with that, we can uh, maybe address that in the questions later. I want to honor my time and give Kikai time to share about Kukulu Kumuhana. Uh, mahalo nui.
and look forward to talking with anybody further. Bye, Kai. <laughs> so um, I'm going to share now about Kukulukumuhana, Pahana Kukulukumuhana, which in a lot of ways is an outgrowth of our collaborative work with uh, Chris McAdoo and many other colleagues, both at Nakula Okamehameha and um, our Kayapuni schools and Kialapono, other Kamehameha Kumu working out in the field, um, all coming together. Um, so this project kind of followed out of that. And while, where uh, uh, Pahanaina Lupa Lupa was focused on epikema um, science, Kukulukumuhana has more of a social studies focus. So uh, as this picture here, which comes from one of our third grade texts, uh, tries to depict, this is from a book about the biography of uh, Kahu Henry Nalimu, who's had an amazing life that spanned from 1835 to 1935. So if you just think of the things that he saw and experienced throughout his time in Hawaii on planet Earth, it was, you know, hard, hard to really grasp the changes that he, he uh, both witnessed and was a part of. So he was born in uh, Papa'aloa in Hiloakau, North Hilo, and, but he moved to Hilo at an early age and became a kahupule, went to Hilo boarding school. But he was also raised in a traditional Hawaiian way where he learned the art of a lava'i manu, a bird a feather collector, and was expert fisherman. And towards the end of his time, his long life, it, it was despite the fact that he was strongly grounded in both worldviews. He never lost any value for his ike kupuna, and it was very important for him to pass it on to his granddaughter here, Kiahiloa. You know that that ike kupuna was huge to him. So I want to start my presentation with something that often comes at the end, and this is a mahalo to the Nalima he nui nana ihana ikahana. Our, our project was organized by our first project director, um, Aulani Kailiho, into writing teams, which is a, kind of a new process for us. So you can see here in the, in the rows, we had a Pico team, an Ali'i team, a Pele team, and an Onipa'a team, and so many contributors. And uh, from our experience, curriculum developers and writers, to some of the Haumana were brand new. We wanted everybody to be involved in the process of Kukulukumuhana. So we called the project Kukulukumuhana for a couple of reasons. Kukulukumuhana is that part of, of Ho'oponopono where you pull together um, thoughts, prayers, collective mana to uh, make sure you're addressing a problem correctly. You know the whole scope of it so you can get to the bottom of it. And in our case, not necessarily a problem, but the challenge is, one of the challenges always in Hawaiian immersion education is just having enough resources. So um, when we started the project, when we were first doing the planning, we realized we had only, a, we did an inventory of our books at Hale Komo, and 27 of the 244 books we had produced at that point were um, only 27 were nonfiction informational books. And that's a second meaning in uh, our project name, Kumohana. Puke Kumohana is the word we have for informational books. So we wanted to Kukulu, ho mohala, ho puka, ke kahimao, puke kumohana, ho, uh, to increase the supply. And uh, I actually didn't do the math, including the um, Aina Lupa Lupa books that Chris shared about, because we have we now have 20 of those. And by project in of Kukulu Kumohana, we're going to present, we're going to have produced another 40 informational books. And so that bring the total supply from 11% of our books to 25%, not including Aina Lupa Lupa. So uh, we're creating another 47 books that are in this sort of genre of informational, which is interesting, Maka, you know, from a Hawaiian language and Hawaiian cultural perspective, as you'll see. And before I leave this slide, I want to make sure I mahalo one of our senior advisors, our editor, Professor Kalena Silva, a renowned Kumuhula, who served both as the editor and he also suggested that we create audiobooks, which I'll share an example of at the end of my presentation. But, you know, mahalo a nui akumukalena, nui lokona ho'o ka oiana i kapahana. Now to just give you a, a glance at our project, you can see here the number of students, teachers, schools on five islands that were served. The kahua for our project is aloha aina, uh, and which I'll talk a little bit more about as I go on. 
There are four main objectives. Uh, first of all, creating these informational books, Poke Kumohana I talked about. There will be two sets. The first one is already on the barge from Korea to Honolulu. Um, it's been printed, 20 books, very similar to what um, McAdoo shared, those, you know, example from Aina Lupa Lupa. It's very much in the same pattern of that. We are finalizing a second set. The first set is focused like on Mo'olelo Aina, Ike Honua, we call it. And the second set, we call it our Ike Oihana set. So it is focused on um, career pathways and how we can bring Olelo and Ike Hawaii and Kuana Ike Hawaii into work and inspire students, in, especially our Kayapuni students, to pursue all kinds of work and bring their Olelo expertise into that. Secondly is curriculum development. We're blessed to be working with um, Professor, I guess I can call her Professor Kanani Nohea Makaimoku, who is now the director of the Kahua Viola Indigenous Teacher Training Program. She um, leveraged her professional relationships with many Kumu to um, involve Kumu in the classroom using our books to develop curriculum units. And then our writing team supported them by creating some assessments and other um, other support materials. A third objective is uh, Papa Ho'onui Ike Kumu, teacher of professional development. We we had one in October. We have another one coming up in March. Interestingly, uh, as we're experiencing, I think, in this conference, the distance lay telecommunications actually increased the participation. We had really good turnout for our first workshop with about 40 of our 75 teachers participating. We also are going to have two university credit courses led by Kumu Kanani Makaimoku this summer. And the teachers there will develop more curriculum and our Kahua Viola, our new Kahua, Kahua Viola cohort will um, participate in the Ahoike section of that class. And then uh, we can't forget our Ohana in uh, Kayapuni. In the Hawaiian language revitalization movement, the Ohana is the, the core. It has to be. And so we're developing Ohana language resources and we're um, hosting uh, Ohana language support workshops. We've done six so far, and we have three more to go. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to just mention about our project logo. All the team members of the Hale Kuomo were involved in um, deciding what the logo would look like. And um, it incorporates just sort of different elements from our writing groups. So the, first of all, you can see in the uh, the pico that are there in the pohaku, um, this is very much the theme of our Papa Malao group, where they talked about pico in, in many different forms. And also the lawae there is is a common um, a common lao that would be included in a lay pico used to bless the new panuhale. And then uh, uh, kahua pohaku you see here symbolizes the many hands working together, like that first uh, the first mahala table I showed. So many people contributed, and then for the so that was uh, so for the papa ekahi set we focus on moolelo ali'i. So then this kahua kind of takes on the symbolism of a kuahu and the respect we have for ali'i and our leadership. And then finally, if you kind of squint and pretend you're taking a bird's eye view of this logo, you might be able to see this idea of water. Or, or even lava um, throwing, flowing through a landscape, an aina, which always endures. And this reflects our, the themes of our Papa Elua set, which was Mo'olelo Pele, a hot issue. Um, when we started the project, the Pele was still hot in Puna, <laughs> probably still is hot today. And um, for third grade, we featured Po'e One Pa'a, the steadfast ones. And um, that is also symboled in, symbolized by this, the aina. That is so pa'a. And so the overarching theme of all of this is aloha aina in all of its meanings, including love for language, culture, one's people, place, and tradition. Okay, so just to um, kind of reiterate a little bit about what McAdoo was sharing, we followed the, the work that we did collaboratively with our colleagues at Nakulo Kamehameha in this leveling system. So kindergarten, our Papa Malao has four levels, and they're symbolized by the hakalama, the hua hakalama. Ha is the lowest of kindergarten up to ma is the highest. Pape kahi, those of you who are familiar with Pontus and Penel, you can see we borrowed from their work, but we also incorporated Pilina Olelo Hawaii as part of our criteria. And of course, we threw out the elements that are not relevant to Olelo Hawaii. 
Uh, Pape Lua, so Pape Kai has six levels, Pape Lua has three, and Pape Kolu has four. And then this is the back of that book. I mentioned the Nalimu book. Um, and so you can see this of the third grade set, this is the lower of the three levels. And that's how you can tell when you have the book in your hand. And each grade level set has an Ike Kahua or a foundational knowledge uh, book. Then has several different potential uses to introduce and reinforce content that the reading groups, you know, if you're doing reading groups in your classroom, this, the Ike Kahua serves as a way to introduce and begin to teach some reading comprehension skills, maybe many lessons, and then also providing a challenging text for the more advanced readers of each grade level. And yeah, I wanted to mahalo all of our friends at Kamehameha Publishing who really led on uh, developing this system. It's a, it's, a living, uh, it's a living work. It's not by no means perfected, but we feel we've made much progress. So now I'm going to move on and share a little bit about the content of our, um, of our set produced by each of our four writing groups. So for Papa Malao, which is kindergarten, like I said earlier, they, they focus on uh, pico of different kinds. So um, you have uh, in the first book, Hey Mau Pico Kokeao, they talk about all the different kinds of pico from the top of the mountain to the pico on a papale, which you can see over here in this one image, pico of the hale, pico of, the, of your own body, and so on and so forth. The next book focused on a lay pico, which it, many of our Kulakaya Puni now um, are involved in creating lay pico, you know, traditionally for a new house, but oftentimes it's used to kind of like reconsecrate every year. Um, and bring everybody together in creating a lay pico and all of the kauna in the lao, like I mentioned, the laua'e. Uh, the third book talks about how we get our life from pico. We have our connection to our ohana and our mo'oku ohau through a pico. And then the, this ma, the level ma book um, talks about the importance of how we malama our pico, uh, whether it's, you know, there are many different traditions of that, whether it's planting it under a tree or putting it in a significant place that has mana'o for how that keiki will develop. And then, of course, there's the Ike Kahua. The second set at, for this um, level is joined together under the theme of responsibility and how that manifests in these different uh, career options. So for the Kwene Mokulele, we have one of our Kayapuni graduates agreed to be photographed, and same for Huli Koihana. Um, so... The idea of this is to help our keikis see themselves possibly pursuing these lines of work and, and know, knowing that their education will provide valuable contributions. Pape Kahi, I think this uh, set really embodies the theme of the conference quite well because the stories were taken um, from Nupepa Kahiko and stories of Ali'i. We're blessed to have uh, an artist working with us, Hana Yoshihata. It's actually referred to us by Kehala Bad, so we mahalo her for that. Um, this is the first book she's illustrated, and uh, I think she's fantastic. Um, so the, the illustration on the right here is from the uh, our level K book, Kahekili Nui Ahumanu. Um, we tried to select Ali'i and or Kahuna from all of the different islands, from Moku Okeave to... Uh, Moku Omano Kalani Po from Hawaii all the way to Kauai. So different these, and then the challenge for this writing group was taking the you know the high level Hawaiian from the newspaper Hawaiian language newspaper articles and leveling it down and selecting the key um, elements of the stories so that it's uh, digestible by our our first grade readers. And for their um, for the second set, they are working on. They chose to stick with the model of um, leadership and uh, the legacies of the of the Hawaiian monarchy. So Hua Kahana Ana Mo'i, legacies of the monarchs, and you can see um, the different um, uh, career pathways that they focus on. For the Kenekoa, they featured Kai Kahele um, when he was still a state senator. Now, of course, he's um, in the U.S. in the U.S. House of Representatives. And um, I won't go into all of it, but uh, all of these career pathways are tied to a motto or a legacy of a different uh, monarch during the monarch period. For Pape Lua, this writing group connected to Aloha Aina through Pele. 
And like I mentioned, when we first started this project, it was right right when the lava was just starting to slow down in Puna. So we figured it was a very hot issue. And for the second set, this group has focused on He Velo Noelo Koka Hawaii, the skillful traits of uh, po- Poe Hawaii. So um, featuring a civil engineer, Hopuka Lole, features both Sig Zane and um, Kialapiko, Tena Kikina, the street street art that we're seeing kind of flower nowadays. And uh, now this is my group. I led this group, so I'm <laughs> super proud of these books. And it was mainly myself and one of our recent graduates from Pahaka'ula. Um, and we chose to store, tell stories of three generations of Po'eone Pa'a, from Henry Nalimu, who I talked a, a, a bit about earlier, born in 1835, to Kupuna Kawahi Paula, who holds a very dear place in many of our hearts, those of us who are in immersion, because she, following a long career um, with the telephone company, as soon as she retired, she dove in and helped um, help the creation, the early creation of immersion education. She was so happy that it happened um, after having, um, you know, being punished for using Olala Hawaii during her grade school days. Now she was part of the, the re-emergence of pride and you know, using Hawaiian as official language of education in Hawaii. And then finally, our, our third um, po'eone pa'a is George Helm, who really, I think, made the term aloha'ina so famous through the, the amazing work he did. And for our um, second set, we are, all of the people featured in our books are, um, well, many of them anyway, are graduates of Kayapuni School. So, for the high, for the Ho'onanea book, we have Kamaka Kehau Fernandez, and we have Kau Ikaina, and we have Iowani Goodju, all gra- immersion graduates who are doing amazing things in the fields of in- entertainment. Um, okay, so I'm getting a little short on time, so I'm going to move quick, more quickly here. These are some of the Hawaiian language family support materials we're creating. So um, I don't know if you can see this book I'm holding up. This is a one of our best-selling books, Kiao Nani. Kiola Nani is a sequel to it. It's um, you know, so in the Kiao Nani, we had a thousand vocabulary words, mostly nouns. Kiola Nani focuses more on the action and descriptor words. So, um, Painu Likiole. Um, then we have we created one of our some of our team members have created Quizlet activities with uh, voice files to be able to experience and learn the language, learn some more um, about how to pronounce the words. Uh, Makalapua Alan Caster is uh, a recent retiree of our college, and she wrote this book, Iohana Olelo Olakako, to bring new families in, newer families, families who are newer to immersion, I should say, um, up to speed about some of the history from the early days until now of, you know, how much has gone into creating our Hawaiian immersion educational movement. We are creating two books on Olelo no Eau. Um, I think these are the first books, Olelo no Eau books, all Maka Olelo Hawaii. One is Okisan Ohana, o- Olelo no Eau pertinent to Ohana. And the other one is Olelo no Eau with a playful or, a, um, you know, that can be used for fun, to, to bring fun into our conversation. So these are really great books. They're also going to be used to create more uh, post Olelo no Iao posters for the walls of our classrooms. Oh, and then also, sorry, Makadu, I know I'm running a little over. We, for all of the books that I shared earlier, we're creating ebook versions of them, which is particularly useful right now in our pandemic time. So um, I won't. Kikuli e Kamawai is. Uh, it's actually on the dock, but I just found out they're doing an ag inspection on our container. We want to release this for uh, Mahina Olala Hawaii. Many, um, many educators in a Hawaiian language leaders contributed essays to this book. It's both in Hawaiian and English. We're creating a book of songs of Aina, Mele Mokupuni, and then um, this book called Kael, which has very interesting um, perspectives on how body parts, so like... Um, Pa'akawaha, Nanakamaka, Ho'olohika, Pepeao, how these body part perspectives are, um, inform ways of learning and knowing 
maka olaloho wai. Aloha aina is an education built on the kahua of Ike Hawaii. It's also many hands working together to build this kahua. And it's both, it's the hua. Aloha aina is the hua. It's both the seed and the fruit of all of that. And I just want to mahalo everyone here for being a part of this conference and for helping to perpetuate this, this um, precious knowledge. And for those of you who might be interested in getting copies of our ebooks, uh, I do want to clarify, they're only Maka Olalo Hawaii right now. We, I saw some questions about, you know, Olalo um, Pelicania versus Olalo Hawaii in the chat. Uh, our books are Maka Olalo Hawaii Vale No. If you're interested, here's the QR code that will lead you to a survey and, and then we'll get you, we'll make sure you get a link so you can get copies of them. And then uh, before we go to Quest, sorry, I just want to share real quickly. Um, this is an example of one of our ebooks. Kule Kahiapo uh, was is the primary author on it about um, George Helm. Like I mentioned, Kalena Silva suggested that we incorporate sound, and so in this version of the ebook, which is not ready yet, we're still um, we're still editing the sound files. But um, you can well, you can hear the Leo Nahe Nahe Leo Vali or Kumu Kalena, um, and then we're we're planning on doing this for all of our books. You know, here in the opening spread, we shared Kalama Ula. So um, if you listen to this file, it's a uh, um, harmony between Kainani, Kahauna Ele, and Kalena. So uh, when we shared this with our Kumu, they're really excited about this, especially during our um, current e-learning focus during the pandemic. Uh, and so with that, uh, I conclude my presentation. Mahalo ho i kaho olohe ana mai, vale no kau. I think we have some time for questions, but I, I, before we get to questions, um, I want to make sure that we, we take the opportunity to uh, thank um, Kikai and Chris for presenting. So if you want to unmute yourself or unmute your camera and just uh, give them a round of applause and just thank them for sharing their, their journey to create these rich resources for even our early learners. So there's some time for questions. Um, if some of them has been answered in the chat, if you have other questions, you could uh, unmute yourself and ask or put them in the chat. You also see a link in the chat to the uh, virtual hookai coming up, just in case you've misplaced your, your program information. Oh, could we share the QR code again? Um, but before that, I'll paste into the chat um, the, the actual link so you can copy it. How to so this is what the survey looks like. Um, and then the QR code. Here's the QR code again one more time. If anybody wants to take a picture. Everybody's been using QR codes lately, but they've gotten so much better. You just point your camera, and it'll it'll take you to the website. Um, if they if they want to contact um, each of you, where how could they contact for I um, sharing ideas or getting more information? Type my uh, email into the chat box. Well, Malanui to the audience for participating with us and spending time with us in our session number three. Um, we hope you enjoy. The rest of the conference, um, the virtual hookahs will be starting shortly, and then we'll close in a keynote after that. So mahalo.